Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at the new curve filters in iClone that allow you to fix erroneous or erratic data from raw motion capture files. This includes a preview function that allows you to see the results in real time while editing. Let's start off by looking at this first example where you can see significant jittering on various body parts at different intervals. This can be caused by tracking markers being obscured during capture or also if the markers are too close to those of another actor. It can also happen when an actor is too close to the edge of the capture area or there are insufficient cameras to capture accurate data. With the new curve filters in iClone, we can take a closer look at this data and resolve the issues. Let's start by right clicking on the clip and slowing it down via the speed option, which doesn't affect the filter functionality as it only analyzes the original motion data. Next, we want to open up the curve editor and animation layer tool, which you can open with the F11 and F12 hotkeys. To see the curve data, we need to unlock the base motion layer. In iClone, motion capture will include both IK and FK data, which you'll find in the IK effectors and FK transformations groups. Some joints may only contain data from one or the other. In the Edit Motion Layer tool, you'll find both IK and FK editing modes. Generally, you'll find significantly more FK control points here. On the ankles, if the control point has a blue outline, that means the data is coming from the IK controller curves. In FK mode, these blue outlines will disappear. In the Curve Editor, you can also switch to Tree View to make the bone structure easier to navigate or use the search bar at the top. Let's start with fixing the issue with the neck twisting first, which occurs at around frame 280. In the FK Transformations hierarchy, we can dig down to find the neck twist 01 and neck twist 02 bones, which contain some sharp jumps in the normally smooth curve. However, there is no problem with the CC base head bone itself. You can use the F hot key without any key selected to frame the entire track or select some keys and press F to frame those. Hold Alt and scroll your mouse to zoom horizontally and Shift to zoom vertically. Hold Alt and click and drag to pan manually. I'm going to first demonstrate the filter on the Z rotation track of the neck twist 02 bone by simply marquee selecting the problem area and selecting remove peaks from the filter menu. Here you can set the strength and click preview mode to see the results in advance. You can hold control and select to add areas of the curve or control shift select to remove them. Find the strength value that best smooths out the curve to your liking, then hit apply to bake the results. You can also apply the filter to multiple selected tracks at once, which saves you tons of time. You can quickly scrub through the timeline in preview mode to ensure that there are no stray peaks throughout before applying. Here you can see a comparison between before and after the filter has been applied. Next, let's do the same thing for the left arm, which jitters similar to the head. In the latest update, you can right-click on any of the effectors in the Edit Motion Layer tool to show its path directly in the viewport with each frame number listed. By doing this, we can easily see that frame 495 is problematic. In the Edit Motion Layer tool, we can click on the Motion Trail icon to adjust some basic options like frame number visibility and range. Check out the dedicated Motion Trail tutorial for more. Motion Trail provides a quick way to find the track for the bone you want in the Curve Editor by simply clicking on it with the Curve Editor open.
In this case, there seems to be no issue with the hand tracks, but if we go up the hierarchy, we can see that the forearm is the issue. If I multi-select its rotation tracks, I can smooth out both X and Y peaks simultaneously. Let's look at something a bit more tricky next, which is the irregular movement on the right arm at different frames. Using the Remove Peaks option here is not the best practice, as it may distort the original curve without fixing the issue. For this, the best option is to select the problem range as accurately as possible, and use the Reinterpolate command. This will generate a new curve based on the surrounding data. With reinterpolate, it's important to be as accurate as possible when selecting the range, preferably with only one or two additional keys selected on either side of the problematic range. We can repeat the process on the Z and X rotation values, again being sure to have a focused area for reinterpolation. For best results, do small, focused areas of each track separately, as they may differ slightly. Once we're done, you can see the fixed result, complete with our nice smooth motion trail. Finally, let's look at fixing the IK data on the twist of the right ankle here. In this case, it looks like all of the foot rotation values are smooth enough and not causing the issue, so let's go over to the IK effectors and find the tracks for the right foot, where we'll be able to see the problem. Here we can repeat the reinterpolation process on the tracks individually to fix the issue. We'll also see a similar issue for the right toe. However, we can't edit this in the IK effectors list, so let's find it in the FK transformations list and use reinterpolate once again. Adjusting FK transformation values like this can sometimes cause a chain effect of problems further up the bone hierarchy, like we now see with the lower leg. In this case, you can just use the same reinterpolation command on the required tracks of that bone. And that's basically the best method for fixing jittery mocap data in iClone. These features make it quick and easy to refine your data for a more efficient workflow. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.